What's up, everyone? Wait. Are we going to tell them? Well, I don't know. What's the video going to be about? Well, I don't want to tell them. You're going to make fun of me. Oh, I'm totally going to tease you. I do something nice. Why can't you just love me? I definitely love you. <laughs> What's up everyone so i got something and i was being a little stingy and i didn't want to spend all the money so i got some half the being price really sweet yep. you were also being really sweet. came out of my hunting money oh it was from your hunting fund yeah well you know we can use it i'll take it out of our hair fund, Do my hair fund? <laughs> what i'm gonna go gray so Matt, being so sweet, we're at the end of our gardening season, decided to order something that's going to make harvest processing mm -hmm. our harvest easier. Yep. <laughs> we probably should have done this at the beginning of the season. Probably, but we wanted to do it last year and we didn't. And then with everything not in stock and everyone's hard to order stuff. Anyways, well, besides just, all that. We're frugal. Yeah. And frugal. we borrowed um, one of them from someone else, a family member and it worked out very well so we're just like okay let's get it my brother has one his broke so we're like let's try this one out can you see what that is a fruit and vegetable strainer attachment for our KitchenAid and it looks just like the KitchenAid box doesn't it <laughs> can you read that can you read that name Matt what does it say Kitch tree. <laughs> Oh, you gotta love Amazon. So Matt thought he was buying the KitchenAid attachment for the fruit and vegetable strainer attachment. And I told him, I'm pretty sure you have to buy two parts. And for whatever reason, we read through the description. I looked at it too, so I'm just as guilty. But we did not catch that this is not the KitchenAid brand one. This is kind of a store brand version. Dude, it the looks KitchenAid like one it. is double the price. It is. So here's the thing. We already have it. We have tomatoes we want to process. We want to make some tomato soup. If it doesn't work, you clean it and return it. If it, if it works, we're going to keep it. So we're going to try this out. The Kitch Tree <laughs> Fruit and Vegetable Strainer Attachment and see if it works. Let's go. If it does, hey, frugal find. <laughs> So last night I already started the tomato soup we're gonna be making today. What I did was I washed, cored the tomatoes, and weighed them to see how much we had. Since we're kind of getting to the end of our garden season, we have already made one whole batch of tomato soup, but we only had enough tomatoes for half a batch. The recipe I'm going to be using is the Vine Fresh Tomato Soup recipe. And this is actually from the Blue Ball book. If you have it, it's in there. I only have the complete book of home preserving from Ball, so I've never purchased this book. But I did, found the re I did find the recipe online, so I will link that in the description below so you can go and find the recipe easily. I just printed it out so I have it nice and handy. I actually keep it right in my canning book. But this is the Vine Fresh Tomato Soup recipe and we are making half a batch. So after I weighed my tomatoes, I realized I had enough for that. We have green pepper cooked in it from the garden, as well as onion and garlic, all from the garden. Since it's just half a batch, I was able to fit it in a pretty um, normal sized pot. I didn't have to get anything large, but I will show you what it looks like inside. I just didn't have time to finish it last night, so that's why we're doing it today. Okay, so we're getting the tomato soup going and the dog started barking, somebody was here. So Matt runs to look at the door and it's the UPS man. We're like, what? We don't have a delivery for today. Well, apparently we did. This wasn't supposed to come till next week. I think Matt got a little excited about ordering canning supplies. My wife does not like using the one from the stove. So when they came out with the electric one and they said it was safe to use, I finally got one. Electric pressure canner, I'm so excited. <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> I am so excited. Matt is probably even more excited because we still have the bag of venison from last year in the freezer that I'm like, yeah, I'll can it one of these days. But meat has to be pressure canned. You cannot safely water bath it. 
so I just haven't gotten around to it. I had to buy, what did I have to buy? A new, I needed a new weight for my canner. So I had bought that and I just, it's been a long time since I used it. In fact, it's been eight years since Matt had it. What was it, a good, was it seven years? Seven years since Matt had gotten a deer. He's digging the venison out of the freezer right now. I'm like, what is he doing? We're in the middle of a video. Look at this. I'm gonna go deer hunting again. <laughs> Yeah, the hunting season is pretty much here, so uh, yeah, now I guess Matt can go uh, hunting because you know we had no room in our freezer, but we would love lots of venison to eat, and my favorite food is canned venison, so I guess if we can get some canned venison on the shelf, that would be pretty awesome. over gravy, or that made into gravy or potatoes, oh. Yes, the best thing ever. If you haven't tried it, you need to. So for our first batch of tomato soup, Matt actually borrowed um, one of the family members um, handheld kind of crank strainers and that worked really well. We actually used to use a juicer to make tomato soup. Don't ever do that. Mm -hmm. We thought it was a good idea. I think we paid like $30 for the juicer. It was just a cheap little thing, but I'm pretty sure like a handheld crank is probably 20, 30 bucks. So that would have been a better option. How much was this when all was said and done? $72 or $73. $70? I think it's working good so far. We're just collecting all of the kind of scraps that are coming out, which is basically peels, seeds. That's it. Um, in a chicken bucket. We have so much of this stuff, but this would make really good uh, chili or something if you wanted to use it for that. Last year we dehydrated all of our peels and we didn't have, we didn't really have much. No, we did have insights from the juicer, I guess. So we, made, we didn't make much tomato soup no. last year, did we? No, we didn't have a whole lot of tomatoes. So it was just peels, basically. We dehydrated and we just kind of put them in our food processor so they're more flake-like than powder. But we used those for thickening things and just kind of adding tomato flavor whenever we wanted to. And that was really nice to have. It's missing the bucket. Close. It depends on when it breaks off. But, um, so we're just gonna give these scraps to the chickens. We've got plenty. Might wanna slow down. Yeah. I'm gonna have to dump this. Decided we were gonna try a pitcher under it just because, so it'll be easier to pour. The funny thing is we just have to cook it in the pot longer with some other ingredients. So it would be nice if we could pour it right back in the pot. I think to put it in perspective when we were using the juicer, I mean, we had towels everywhere. Oh. There was juice coming out everywhere. It was so messy. The only mess we got coming from this is me spilling <laughs> on the side. All right, so our first thoughts on first time using the Kitsch Tree Stand Mixer Attachment for the Fruit and Vegetable Strainer Attachment Set. <laughs> I thought it did good. I didn't see really any problems other than the little leak, but it was working. Oh, the leak out of the screw part, yeah. Yeah. That, out of the, this part right here. Um, the one thing I did see though, is when I took this, and I unscrewed this and took it off, there was a drop of liquid in there. I mean, literally a drop. Yeah. So that's something that I have to watch next time we do it. Because if there's liquid going in there, then I just gotta make sure that seal's good or go to the hardware store and get a rubber O-ring to put in there so this way no liquid goes, because I don't want liquid going there. So other than that, I think it's fine. That could have, also that drop could have came from when I took it off 
fell from the top. So I really can't. It's a drop. It's not the end of the world. So <clears throat> for half the price, I can buy an O-ring. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And if it does, I will let you guys know in a video. Yeah, we'll um, keep you posted. They sent a brush, and the brush is for this piece. So I'm going to show everyone this if you have one. When you push it in, you'll see it's starting to come out. Well, this can't go all the way through because of this handle, but they put a nice rope on here. All the brushes right now are folded back. So when I go to pull this out, they're gonna go the other way and they're gonna come out to these holes. So it's gonna be kind of tough. Just give it a good yank and it comes out. It cleaned this thing super cool. Like I did it once and it was clean. So works good. So that's really smart to have kind of like a bottle shaped brush. Yeah. Yeah, that worked well. Um, yeah, and then it should it should also work for meat, correct? Yep. So if I get another deer, I'll use it because we got the other little grinder. So then this turn this into a grinder, and we'll use it, and then it'll grind up all the meat into like a hamburger, and we'll see how it works. So we're gonna get the other ingredients for the soup in the pot. One of them is tomato paste. And I didn't realize that not everybody takes tomato paste out of their cans the same way. So I'm going to show you how I do this, how my mom taught me how to do it, and how Matt said his mom did it too. But I just thought this was a universal thing, and apparently it's not. I actually don't need all of the can of tomato paste, so I'm going to use a bowl to put it in. Since tomato paste is so thick, I just open one side of the can with my can opener. I actually push it down if it comes out a little. And then I open the other side. Since it's so thick, it shouldn't fall out. All I do is I push on one of the sides and it comes right out. And normally I would take that metal piece off right away. And then I just kind of scrape this off and it's all out. And I don't have to use a spoon or clean out the inside of this with a spatula and kind of wreck it from the jagged edges. But I didn't realize this wasn't something that everybody does. So now you know if you didn't already. No, it's only do that with paste, not tomato soup. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear Matt in the background? Yes. Do not do this with something runny like tom tomato soup. Well, hopefully you wouldn't if you're canning tomato soup. Yeah. But <laughs> Matt, are you playing? Yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> Dude, I mean, yeah. It's about time. <laughs> You're gonna do that again. It's like the first time I tried to open the Instant Pot. <laughs> I almost forgot that I am adding some extra herbs from the recipe that weren't in there. Actually, just dried basil. From what I am understanding, as far as safe canning goes, you can always add dried herbs without affecting the acidity level, making this um, still safe. So last time I made it, I added a tablespoon for a whole batch of tomato soup, and I feel like it could have used more basil. So I wrote down to try two tablespoons next time, since this is half a batch, I'm dumping in one tablespoon. We'll see if that gives it a great flavor. We had a really awesome tomato basil soup recipe that we were using and unfortunately it had some ingredients in it that weren't canning safe butter and flour so we decided that um, we had either two options keep the recipe and freeze it or try to uh, recreate that recipe with an existing safe recipe so that's what i'm doing and then when we cook this we will cook it with about half the soup when we take out the this is hard to explain when we take out the jars to actually make it and prepare it to eat, we'll mix the jar of the soup with the same amount of like heavy whipping cream or whole milk or something just really thick and creamy so that we get that really delicious taste. So I love this. It's got like a warming function so our jars are actually in here with water warming up. So I feel like I haven't been canning in a while because I can't remember exactly where things go. Like, does my lemon juice go on the right or does it go on the left? Silly things, right? So I'm just loving this feature here where this can just keep my jars warm. We were so blessed with some neighbors stopping by to visit and it's just keeping my jars warm while I'm waiting. So now that I'm ready, let me check the instructions one more time. We did actually run a test batch of water 
in, I think these are supposed to be full, I totally messed that up, uh, in the pressure canner, but now we're just doing the boiling water method. So I can't check yet to see if these sealed well, but I think they did well. I mean, worst case, we're gonna have a ton of soup and we can throw it pretty flat in the freezer. It's not gonna take up too much room, so I'm not too worried about it. The thing I'm most worried about is how I'm going to get these jars out. I wish this was like my Instapower. I have somewhere to set this to. So these jars are super hot, or warm, I guess. And they just have you fill it half full with warm water, and then I need to dump them out. I think I can do this safely, just kind of dump it in the sink. Sorry, we're post supper at this point, so I got a lot of cleanup I need to do tonight. All right, so I'm gonna need a hot pad for doing that. And I need a hot pad to set my pop on. This will be good. Oh, don't forget your lemon juice. All right, so also grabbed a stick for some deep bubbling. I forgot about that. So each of my pints is going to have a tablespoon of lemon juice just to get that acidic level up. And this has been on the stove, keep it nice and warm, simmering for a little while. Tomato products have like half an inch of head space. Is anybody else like very particular about how their flats face that they need to face the same way as the writing? Am I the only one? All right, so it says to make sure you do one jar at a time, which I'm pretty sure is common. I think there are people who do fill all their jars at once just out of convenience, but obviously it's not going to be as hot if you do it that way. I also wonder sometimes, like just pulling this off my stove, how fast it's cooling down. Being we uh, did not plan on getting our pressure canner today. I totally just planned on water bathing these on the stove and I feel a little thrown for a loop, but I am just so excited we get to use this and really try it out. And I will definitely let you guys know the more I use it, what I really think of it. We are coming to the end of our canning season. I know there are lots of people who can year round, um, but for us canning, canning is a season, um, usually post harvest and pre-Christmas and maybe a little bit after that if we have tomatoes in the freezer or meat in the freezer from hunting, but that's about it. Now, because I'm water bathing, you can see the water level is really low. So what they recommend you do is keep some boiling water on your stove and fill it an inch above the rims. Now this is for water bathing, not for pressure canning. So I got my water, it is boiling here. I would really love to invest in a electric kettle specifically for this one day. Um, so I don't need to worry about <laughs> pouring this boiling water in. I just had enough. <laughs> so I am very new to this. Clearly I have to cover up some of first side. So I definitely don't want to give you guys a full how to on this until I'm more comfortable using it. Um, but I really like this laminated sheet to just kind of remind me and walk through things. Pretty sure I just hit the play button next. Um, but just to be sure, Place cover on canner, lock, lower sensor arm. Put that, that was this. And press play and it should say heat. Heat, 45 minutes. Our tomato soup recipe we're using is a 40 minute recipe, but we are um, 
above a thousand feet so we just add an extra five minutes and I typed all that information in earlier but I'm just checking I did it right boiling water canner 45 minutes now oh, it says once it gets up to temperature so it's a lot like it's a lot like the instant pot once it gets up to temperature it's gonna beep again it says and then it's gonna change to canning rather than heating and then my timer will start going down To be completely honest, it's getting kind of late at night, so I don't know how much more I'm going to show of this. I will do as much as I can, um, but I might be in my PJs by the time we get to the end of this. <laughs> so you guys, I just have to laugh. I got so excited with this thing that I took the tomato soup out and completely forgot to record it. Water bathing in here is super easy, just super convenient. I knew exactly how much time was left. The timer was on here just like the Instant Pot, and it beeps for me for each step. I knew what to do. I was a little concerned because I was reading one of the steps and it said to unlatch it and carefully take the cover off, but it made it sound like it was during cooling mode and I got all worried and so Matt did it for me. <laughs> so this lid, there's some water in here I'll have to clean up, but this lid has this big hole in it. So as soon as I lifted that up, it was like, as soon as Matt lifted that up, it was all the pressure came out and he was able to open it up, cool it down. I love that noise. Cool it down naturally. We were able to get a few jars of tomato soup. So a few more going in the cupboard, super exciting. I think I'm going to be making uh, some venison pressure canning mode tomorrow. And I just remember we have some green beans in the fridge that I hadn't gotten blanched yet. So maybe i will uh can those too so excited okay everyone so it has actually been a few days since we got our presto electric canner and i just kind of have to fill you in with where we're at why we decided to get it we we're actually hoping to get it next year um but here she is so technically the presto electric canner has not been tested and deemed safe by the National Center for Home Food Preservation, which as you guys know is kind of where I would refer you always to if you are going to can, freeze, specifically can things for sure. We did a lot of research on this and as this thing came out, it seemed like there were a few little issues and things and it seems like more and more they're getting figured out and the company's been great with people who've had the, who already had the canner and just kind of to learn and how it goes. Since it is from Presto, I do feel a little bit safer about the fact that that is a trusting canning company. I really don't think they would hurt their name by putting out something that they know doesn't work, especially being they know what the requirements for the National Center for Home <laughs> Food Preservation would be. There are some other electric canners who claim to be safe for canning and the Cary brand as well as a few others have been tested at the Utah State University to see if they could keep pressure levels um, consistent for safe canning and unfortunately the Cary and pretty much everyone they tested failed. This one has not yet been tested in an official way like that other than the testing Presto itself has done. Um, so between Presto's testing and independent other people's testing this is actually more accurate than the canner on the stove. The thing about the electric canner is it doesn't have that kind of human element, the human error, everything's digital, so I can't really make a mistake on it where if I am on the stovetop, it's really easy to get distracted by life and things and not keep my pressure consistent. I really like the canner so far. In case of emergency, it actually does shut off or if something goes wrong and it'll show an error code so you know what to do. So there's instances where you know like some what was wrong with your item because the code means something or to contact them directly um, for help. There is a vent and it vents itself and it tells you when to take this off, when to put it on, when to fill your jars. It keeps your jars nice and warm. Um, pretty much everything's really built in. I feel like it's safety um, mechanisms are really nice when you unlock this part to um, the pressure is already down but when you unlock this part it's still technically locked 
So if for some reason there was still some pressure in here, I feel safe about it would be able to get out before I actually unlock the top and open it. So, so far I am just really impressed and I can tell you we have almost canned more things in our electric canner in the last few days we've had it than we did for most of the harvest season, which is just crazy. We um, were blessed with more potatoes, so we canned a whole bunch of potatoes, which we've never actually done before. We used the pressure canning option on here. We followed NC, um, the National Center for Home Food Preservation um, instructions for canning potatoes, and I'm really excited about this. We've actually had a few and they were delicious, but um, this is something that my grandparents used to can, so I'm really excited um, to be able to do that. We also canned some green beans because it was a lot more convenient to just, we keep saying, oh, we have to get green beans done, I have to get green beans done, but taking out the big canner and getting that all done for three or four jars seemed kind of silly, but in here, it didn't seem like a big deal to have three or four jars going. It's no different really than having um, an Instapot on my counter. We also did some venison. I am so excited. This venison is actually from last fall. It was in our freezer and I had been meaning to do it. And again, I have to take out the pressure canner. I need to find a time where I'm not gonna be distracted. It's easier said than done. So we brought back some venison and this is my very favorite food in the world. And what's really cool you guys is we actually, since we did potatoes, green beans, and venison, we kind of laughed about it because we have at least four jars of each. Some have a few more, but that's a meal, that's four different meals right there. Mashed potatoes with some venison gravy and green beans on the side. And it is just so awesome to feel like we are putting, putting some things up for the winter, some healthy things that we'll have, a lot of things that we grew ourselves or harvested ourselves, and that's just really exciting. As you know, our freezers are full, so Matt would like to do some deer hunting this year, and we will eat the meat. Venison is my favorite. Um, so. I think if he gets one, I'll be doing a lot more um, canning of venison. Thanks for watching our day in the life. Guys, uh, if you have any questions about the Presto Electric Digital Canner, will you leave a comment down below? I would be happy to answer any of your questions to the best of my ability. But at the end of the day, I always say to go to that trusted source and do what's best for your family. I feel safe about this, so this is where we are at. Bye, guys.